This is the BBC Home Service. Here is the news. The desperate battle on the Northern Front continues. The British Expeditionary Force was fighting for its life in its retreat on Dunkirk. After dark, we march on the North Star to Dunkirk. This is London. And the Allied rear guard is still holding Dunkirk against increasing German pressure. Heavy German field guns are pounding the beaches. The Admiralty want men experienced in marine internal combustion engines for service as engine men in yachts or motorboats. I'm sure you'll all be aware that the weather forecast is fine for us to go. Southwest 2 to 3 becoming variable. Visibility. 60 little ships filed out of Granville Dock in Dover this morning, mostly smart wooden motorboats. Hundreds of onlookers cheered and waved from the harbour wall. <laughs> 60 little ships today, 600 off Dunkirk in 1940. For days and nights, ships of all kinds have plied to and fro across the channel under the fierce onslaught of the enemy's bombers, utterly regardless of the perils, to bring out as many as possible of the trapped BEF. There were pleasure steamers, cross-channel passenger steamers, coasting crafts, tugs, motor boats and launches, and motor and sailing barges. These little pleasure steamers defy bombs, shells, magnetic mines, torpedoes, machine gun fire to rescue our soldiers. That's Janthea's horn. Janthea, then named Rida, made two trips to Dunkirk and like nearly all the little ships, she was commandeered and crewed by the Navy or by reservists. Janthea's skipper now, Norman Cannell, is a past commodore of the Association of Dunkirk Little Ships. Janthe could get right in shore, take the troops off. She's got a lot of deck space, she's big. So she would then take the troops across the sandbank to the bigger ships which were anchored off and just ferrying backwards and forwards. It was a shuttle service. Oh, basically. it was a shuttle service. They, they were running for 12 hours just going backwards and forwards until they were beginning to get low on fuel. And then they headed back for Ramsgate and she had 24 Englishmen on board, English soldiers. And on the second trip, she brought back 21 French soldiers. They only thought they'd get 75,000 troops off. They got 338,000. We must never forget that. I sat in the House of Commons this afternoon and heard Winston Churchill. He told of the 335,000 troops, British and French, brought back from Dunkirk. British losses exceed 30,000 killed, wounded and missing. We shall go on to the end, he said. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight on the beaches, in the fields, in the streets, and in the hills. We shall never surrender. Early this morning, in the Patisserie Le Gros, the proprietor, Madame Ilmoine, and a customer, Madame Pichon, each in their Sunday best, had tears in their eyes as they spoke about the courage of the men who are gathered here in Dunkirk today and who fought here 60 years ago. I remember the war and on peut pas, it's impossible to forget. Impossible forget. Bravo. Bravo. Colonel Bogey, played by the Lancastrian Brigade Band and Corps of Drums, smart in their scarlet tunics here in the sunshine in the main square in Dunkirk. The Dunkirk veterans are stood at attention now in their blazers and berets and proudly wearing their medals. Train after train puffed out of the station, all full of sleeping men. All the way along the line, the people of England stood at the level crossings and in the back gardens to wave to them. And so the men of the BEF came home. These men are marching into history. One veteran here today is William Blackwell, here to remember his comrades in the 57th Anti-Tank Regiment, part of the crucial rear guard action that kept the Germans at bay and which allowed the Dunkirk evacuation to take place. And today, in his mind, he's 25 years old again, and he's with his friends. As an old man, like old men do, I, I walk and sometimes talk to ghosts. 